Hey guys, this is Merlini of Merlini Duda, and I'm here to bring you my first 6.79 Merlini plays, and this one is an offlane Tidehunter. This mode is actually Captain's Draft, and the offlane changes are actually pretty much nice. This was my first time experiencing it. This will be a post-game commentary. If you do want an in-game commentary, you can just watch my Twitch VOD catalog. Um, I will post a link inside the description if you would prefer to hear what I'm thinking real time. This one I actually give like quite a few instructions to my team because it's such a close game and uh, I'll try to remember them as I progress through the replay. So Captain's Draft, I actually pick up Tidehunter uh, very early. I believe I was second pick. They first pick Rubik. I pick Sora and they pick Riki immediately after. Uh, the most interesting pick I think is Bloodseeker uh, very early. I had faith that Bloodseeker would be able to win mid. He's pretty good versus Windrunner, pretty good versus Zeus too, just being able to silence him and he can, should be just able to bloodbath up in the middle um, and just get a magic stick and heal up through any sort of Zeus harass unless he gets like two regen runes. Um, FNC also requested Slardar really early so I picked it for him too. Um, so I pick up, I think, the last hero. I don't mind playing Sniper. It's actually Support Sniper, too. That's also very unusual. And I think Material Queen plays this. And it's just like a, you get Headshot or Take Aim and you just constantly right-click them. And then you get Early Boost and Shrapnel for Anti-Push. And uh, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's uh, just something I want to try out. Captain's Draft is um, like what I do. Like, is where I try to try out stuff a lot so I'm going to fast forward through like the early part of this game and start it once maybe like 10 seconds to go so in case you're unaware of the 6.79 changes oh wait I gotta go to player perspective hold on a second player perspective I'm going to me take this down so you can see okay so I actually get boots first and I'm trying to see what's over here. I don't actually have wards. Someone actually pulled me a tango, luckily. I bought chicken and boots, so I have absolutely no regen besides the one tango. It's on a minute cooldown. I didn't want to die there. Um, I had the risk of like being blocked. There could be a third person up there. I don't actually know. So I just have to eat my tango, cut down the trees, and leave. So you don't actually really need to do the trick anymore where you like go over here behind their T2 or in between the T1 and the T2 and uh, bring them over here. Because the creeps, if you have a good block, they meet like... Uh, very close to the river and if they want to harass me they're gonna to have to go under tower at least um, the uh, Self assassin so I right click them a lot so I can bring the creeps over to me and you can do some creep aggro tricks to Help your lane out a lot and it's just much easier to last hit when your creeps are on your side If they try and harass you they'll often uh, take damage from your own creeps uh, Boost first just in case I need to run tide is actually a pretty tanky hero 568 HP without um, any items at all, any HP items, which is pretty cool. And if you're in this sort of situation, especially versus a melee hero, I would highly encourage getting max anger smash. So my skill build will be a 3 2 3 1 3. So anchor smash, Kraken shell, anchor smash, gush, and anchor smash. And I get max anchor smash at level 7. So at level 7, I have one of every skill uh, and four an anchor smash. And it also helps for. Um, uh, stealing creeps too. If you're in a triple lane sometimes you max gush, it just depends whether you're actually going to be casting a lot or not. I actually try to redirect the creeps up here. I try and move them up here so that uh, my creeps go into the tower. Uh, I, I fail so I right click them to aggro the creeps because if I push my creeps into the tower then um, the creep will push out closer to my river and you always want to be like right outside your tower or under your tower. Generally right outside your tower so it'll stay there and I just try and last hit with uh, anchor smash a lot. He doesn't actually harass me that much early, so I can pick up a magic stick instead of, let's say, ferrying over some salves or a ring of uh, regen for early tranquil boots. Uh, but he does start picking up the harass, so I have to invest in some regeneration. And you always want to tailor your build to how your opponents are playing. Um, and if he doesn't, if he plays super passively, then I just go arcane boots and spam the crap out of him. But he he harasses me, and he knows what's up. Um, so, yeah, 6.79 just makes alf laners actually stand a chance, and they do a 2-1-2 at the start. I think we can win um, at least two out of three lanes. Bloodseeker beats out Zeus in middle. Um, I've played both sides of the matchup, and Bl Bloodseeker just wins. Um, at least the matchup part, uh, not necessarily the after that, but just because Zeus has such high burst. He actually double sentry. I don't know why. I don't actually think I like stood there and blocked the spawn, so I didn't actually know this um, when I put the replay up, but uh, that's cool.
Only said 200 gold for them. I pick up a ring of protection because he does harass me, so I need Tranquil Boots early. And this is the first time I got post uh, 6.78 Tranquil Boots, and they're not as good as I thought. It's just really annoying it always being disabled as disabled right now. Luckily, it's not disabled by the poison from Orb of Venom. Sometimes it counts as instances of damage, sometimes it doesn't. For example, when you're a melee hero and you have Orb of Venom and you harass a Spirit Bear, it can't actually return because of the Orb of Venom damage. So, um,. Yeah, I think Tranquil Boots is probably, like, um, you know, whenever you attack or get attacked as opposed to damage over time, which is which is cool. But you're, you're able to last it fairly well with Anchor Smash. It does quite a bit of damage. 125 for 40 mana, that's just sick nasty good. And 30 mana at level 1, that's, it's very cost efficient, and it also um, prevents him from harassing me that much just because it's such a high reduction in physical damage. 40% at all levels. Uh, that combined with Cracking Shell should leave you very, very safe in the offlane um, situation. So, building out my Magic Sarge is just trying to get level 6 right now. Do I really want to leave my lane? No, I'm getting a lot out of my lane right now. Like, Rubik's not denying me that much experience because it's a small camp instead of a medium camp right now. Riki's like trying to harass me, but I'm playing pretty passively, and I have Anchor Smash, so it's not that big of a deal. Um, and just farm away, trying to get level 6 and then make an impact. And here's the first blood attempt going on right now. I don't want to walk in a smoke cloud because I'll get slowed. Um, I go in here. I probably could have turned around and gushed him earlier. I didn't actually think he was going to chase me. Um, but luckily I actually get two kills out of this. So all in all, I would consider that a big win for my lane. Getting a 2-on-1 kill, killing the Riki early. Um, I gave up first blood, but I think it's definitely worth it for a 2 on 1 kill. And keep in mind, the other side of the map is 4 on 3. It's a 1 on 1 on mid and 3 on uh, 2 on bottom, so they should be able to kill him. I look at the silencer, I think he should die, uh, but I don't actually check because I need to concentrate on my lane. And I actually have a pretty good amount of gold. Silencer actually kills Sardar first, which I didn't expect. Uh, but gotta focus on my own lane, just keep trying to harass um, this guy out. I don't actually know his items right now. I click on him occasionally, but it's really difficult in um, player's perspective because I just do it so quickly. So I'm deciding what item to go right now. I have like a fair amount of gold. I want to see like how my team is doing though. And Zeus is just not doing well at all. Um, he is... Or, not Zeus, Bloodseeker is just not doing well at all. I pull down a scoreboard, 0-1-0, uh, zero, zero, and that's just not good. I check his items later, and I'm just in awe at the discrepancy of the items. But, that's neither here nor there. We'll get into that later. Ursa already picks up phase boost. I can do the small camp, but I end up taking up a, tanking a lot of damage. But, I can't really go up there right now. Um, I don't want to be close to the tower, because they can just kill me. They already killed me over here, so if they have... I think go with me over here, probably like almost two telekinesis, two blink strikes, that's just way too much for me to handle. I'm actually going for an early game build with an urn, um, and they find me, which is not good, um, but luckily they don't telekinesis me. I think I would have died there had they gone on me. It was a little bit risky for me to do that. I uh, probably should have gone to the secret shop earlier, or, or the side shop earlier, or I should have just bought my Sage's Mask from base, but I wanted to pick it up as soon as possible. And I get this because I think I'm going to be involved in a lot of kills. There's already 8 kills 6 minutes into the game. If it were a more passive game, I would just save it for Blink, but I think that there's going to be a lot of kills. I'm not going to be able to farm up my 2150, and the urn will be very, very useful for those fights, especially with my relatively limited mana pool. If you look at my mana pool right now, if I TP, I don't even have mana for all 3 of my spells. So 150 plus 120 is 270. 70 plus 50, uh, it's about to be 60 mana, so we're looking at a 330 mana plus TP scroll. I'd have to use my magic wand if I wanted to use everything, so I, I need more mana. Um, Urn of Shadows, the mana regeneration helps with that, and the strength helps too. When they have like a lot of magical damage bursts, I need to be able to survive through like the global, the Zeus burst, the smoke screen, maybe through a shackle too, so as much HP as possible is good. I, don't, I can't stay up in lane right now, I'm way too low, I'm like half HP, I can easily die, especially when they have a Zeus. You always want to play a little bit differently when they have a Zeus, so you just don't give up kills unnecessarily. I get Sentry Wars because I actually want to um, kill... Um, I say very early. Blood Secret actually calls for a TP up top, but I uh, TP mid. I didn't actually hear him until afterwards, and he's like WTF, and this is probably where the mid game starts going wrong for us. I didn't actually know they had a ward up in mid, but I'm just trying to play passively and just get creep kills, get more monies. Uh, I do need a TP scroll though, and he actually wants me to um, come up top, so... 
Uh, they have an observer ward over here, and I'm in like no man's land right now. Though I definitely do not want to be right there. This is just a really bad place. But as soon as they back off, and I don't, I don't see them. I know the gank's over just because if all three of them swarm on me in the river. Bloodseeker can't do anything. I'll just die. Someone will get ruptured, and they he, they'll just stand there because there's no pressure out. And um, it's just way too dangerous. I don't have enough mana for all my spells either because I've been spamming in the mid. And he's caught in the position I would have been caught in if I did retreat. So I don't actually know what he was thinking there. Clearly there were two heroes up there earlier when he was there. And then Zeus went missing. And even if Zeus weren't missing, he still has his ultimate. So that's just not a good place to be at all. And we're just trying to push out the wave. I know Zeus is uh, somewhere. Um, on the top half of the map, but um, I'm not really too scared of them. Notice I'm like ready to run down right if anything happens. If I see a couple of heroes running from over here, then Rubik especially, because if Rubik comes over here, I know the SA is right behind him because what's a solo Rubik gonna do to me? Like absolutely nothing. So if I see one hero, I know there's two. It's similar to like when a hero just like runs to you when there's a Nyx Assassin on their team, you know there's a Nyx Assassin Vendetta. So I always have to keep that in mind. And they're actually looking to gank me over here, but. Um, just hug the left side. You notice my I'm tr always trying to be wary about my position. Positioning is just so important as Tide Hunter. If I get caught in a smoke cloud, if I get caught in a shackle, if I get caught in a silencer ult, but I don't take any damage because I'm too far away, then my Kraken won't proc, and then my team will die. I actually want to be caught in the AoE during global because I want the global to be taken off by Kraken. So sometimes you want to take damage as Tide Hunter, and that, you can't say that with every hero. Like, what hero do you want to take damage? Maybe like Axe, maybe if you have Blade Mail, but in general, um, you have to think about these things as the game as the game goes on. I remember I was watching a um, professional game the other day. It was a Bat Rider and a Life Sealer, and they were ganking like a level seven Luna. And the Bat Rider had blink. They blink on him. He pops out. He actually gets the um, Eclipse off afterwards, and he just straight up kills the Bat Rider because he takes all four hits plus a Lucent Beam. But if the Life Sealer didn't actually rage, then he, he would have split the damage. If he takes too much, you just rage if you're at half HP. And how is a Luna going to kill you one on two when both heroes are at half HP with the clips already down? So sometimes you want to split the damage like that. If you don't rage, this guy probably still dies because he's going to have like a billion stacks on him. Um, but yeah, anyways, I should have probably been at er these early fights. I got the early Urn of Shadows, uh, but I'm not actually at these fights. They're taking fights like a little bit too far away from Tower, though, and it's like a three-on-three -three situation at best, and they have a Zeus, so I don't really know why they're fighting so far away. We need to initiate with like a um, Rupture or something like that, or a Ravage, or just counter gank them when they're playing too aggressively, so I don't really think we did a very good job at all in this early game uh, trying to... Uh, prevent their kills and they're already getting a pretty big kill advantage and um, they want me to bait over here he actually uses global just a half second too late if they use it a little bit earlier then um, I don't actually know what level his last word is so I try and anger smash it off if it was level 1 last word I would have lived since I had 137 HP but um, Rubik actually steals Sultan and Crush, and I'm like, crap. If you don't know what Rubik has, you just click on him and it'll show you. So I think it's definitely worth it, though. An awful inner kill for a solo mid Zeus kill. And Zeus has, like, Arcane Boots plus Bottle. Um, our Bloodseeker has, like, just very, very poor. So I know the mid matchup didn't go very well. He actually was not part of my stack. I almost stole his stack um, just because my teammates are more reliable that way. But in this particular scenario, I wouldn't pick Bloodseeker. I would just pick the way easier mid, um, especially a hero that doesn't need a snowball. Guess um, what's happening. Looks like Cat is. I'm trying to help him out over here. Earn him up. Uh, I want to lay a sentry ward in case people come. I don't have Ravage right now, so I have to be pretty scared. Um, but just try not to get caught in Shackle. Try not to get caught in too much AoE. I get hit by the Shackle shot as well as other spells. And really want to go away right now. Whew. That's close. So. Um, we're trying to pick fights right now, but we don't have Ravage. I don't know if it's the best idea for us. Bloodseeker keeps on dying. Things are just not going well for us. So this is a 3 for one trade. Um, no, but I, they don't have Global, though. We don't have Ravage. I think Ravage is a little bit more, but I don't expect to trade that badly. So in my mind, I'm like, crap, this game is going pretty poorly. We need to try and um, get an advantage or you know play aggressively, do something different. Because what, we're, we, what we've been doing just has not been working. 12 and 8, SA is still pretty farmed. I can't actually see the net worth like when I'm uh, playing the game, so I don't usually like to refer to it because 
uh, when you make decisions in the game, you, you can't pull out a gold grab. You can't see people's lasses or net worth. So I know Riki is farmed, and I know they're winning these team fights, even though we should be trading a little bit better. So I'm a little bit worried at this point in the game. FNC isn't having the greatest game either. Um, two and two on our safe lane in the three on two scenario ideally he'd have zero deaths and maybe like three or four kills with more items but looking at his items he has what just treads and bracer and almost drums so um i'm scared for our late game because our blood seekers under farm our support is a sniper and slardar is under farm too but luckily one thing we do have going for us is a lot of minus armor and we have a lot of physical damage too like most of our team is physical damage, we have Gush, we have Amplify damage, and at this point I already know that we lost a fight on bottom, like without Ravage, and I don't want to pick a fight right now, at least not where I think the f the terms are even. Um, so I just opt to push right now, because when you're behind, getting even trade is good for you, right? Um, because you shouldn't be trading evenly because you have a disadvantage. So we get a T1, they get a T1 plus a kill. I'd say that's about pretty even. It's just a support sniper too. Doesn't really matter. Still trying to farm up right now. I actually pick up a Staff of Wizardry because I need mana. I need mana badly too. If you look at my mana pool, it's like always pretty low. And yeah, I'm casting um, Anger Smash a lot, but I don't want to just be sitting passively, like not doing anything. I want to be able to farm while nothing's happening around the map. So because of that, I have to spam Anger Smash and if I get a Blink Dagger, I can still get Global if they want to do so. So I just offer a Force Staff. I can push someone out of a Shackle. I can push someone out of Telekinesis. If I'm if someone's Globaled, um, I can push someone out of Smoke Cloud too. So it's still a pretty useful item. I can push myself out of Smoke Cloud too because Smoke Cloud, Kraken Shell won't take off because it's like a sitting AoE. So it will just reapply uh, once Kraken comes off. So Force Staff, I think, is the right pickup here. And again, we need more early game items to... Uh, try and contest them as they're five maining right now. So when they're five maining and you're behind, you want to get all the items that you can to try and overcome that um, lead. So I see right now that there's a lot of heroes in middle, so I can actually farm this safely. Riki was actually scouting me out, but I didn't know that. But even if he were, I can just TP out. It's like whatever. He doesn't have that much damage right now that he can just kill me 1200 HP with Kraken Shell um, and Magic One and TP Skull. You should not die in this scenario. So. He actually pings him out. I drop a sentry ward, but we don't actually see him. I expect him to like maybe scout the jungle a little bit to see. Um, but luckily, Ursa has a dust. He uses his blink strike. Go for the dust. I need to get a gush on him. He's trying to fog right now. Um, I hear a drum being popped, but um, the slow on the dust actually got buffed from 10 to 15%. And with that, we are able to keep kill him. And our cat also has a haze. So um, he could potentially have just TP'd out. Uh, I would have the blown ravage. That may have been the best case scenario for them because after that, they can just force the issue mid and take down um, our tower. But he chose to play another way and just try and fog, which is not the wrong idea. But my team, I mean, Ursa and I were already top, so we can't be mid, too. I don't know. There, it's like, again, three on four scenario for our team. I don't really know why they're taking fights. They should just be sitting at the tower, spamming shrapnel, playing very, very defensively. And I actually click on uh, Sniper's build, and it doesn't have max shrapnel. All you need is level one headshot. You don't need damage. You just need, you just need to be able to stun. So... Um, and and slow so you need the utility spells with um, him. I told him to max shrapnel. I probably tell him in voice chat, but um, If you're going to support sni sniper, I would highly recommend maxing shrapnel and just trying to farm out. I'm a level 11 right now I have four steps, so we're doing pretty well, but uh, it was 12 to 8 before now it's 14 to 9 and you know, we're just like trading like mediocre at best and they have better team fight. We don't have BKBs coming up. I'm still like very worried, but I want to defend this mid tower because they just putting pressure on him. So it's like very clear what their game plan is. They want to take out mid tower as soon as possible. And then like, just like take over our jungle. It's much more difficult to take over the opponent's jungle when this mid tower is up. So try to defend this at all costs. I have sentry wards on me always for, um, for Riki, and it's also much easier to retain map control if you have the mid tower, just because you only really need like a couple places for sentry wards. You just need one in middle, and then you can just like turtle very effectively. If you don't have this mid tower up, you need sentries like in a lot more places. You need sentries over here, so they don't have a ward up here. You need like sentries over here, so they don't push them up the hill. Then you need sentries from like um, in this mid area. You need sentries right right outside your T2. So because of that, it just 
you just need a lot more. And I re-rotate and try and help him out. He uses the dust. I don't actually know how much longer was left on the dust. I don't want to risk him getting away at all. For example, he could run into the fog, TP with a global, and um, immediately escape. And it's a low low probability that he may escape, but I don't want to risk it. I need to keep the Riki down at all costs because our heroes are really under farm. So I'll trade my cooldown for that. It's That's always a judgment call, though. Um, and he probably I probably could have gotten the kill with without Ravage, but sometimes you just gotta guarantee it. So Ursa ends up dying again. Ursa is doing a very good job too of fighting a lot. Ursa I think is one of those heroes that has to fight a lot like prior to 20 minutes because the hero's strength doesn't lie in the really late game. It's being able to just like crush heroes really early with just like phase and or Vlad's. So pause goes on right here. I'll try and speed it up a little bit. Um, these tampons don't last long. Yeah, this is a pretty long pause. Mannered people, mannered. And I'm still like, you know, a little bit, a little bit scary of how the game is going on right now. We need more, need more farm. We need our BKBs. Like, what do they really do versus BKB? Um, they have silence or ultimate, and um, that goes to BKB. Other than that, like Riki oh, does a fair amount of damage. Um, but. Like, we have, like, just m much better heroes versus BKB. We have... I can, like, blink Ravage on people to um, instant initiate on them before they can BKB. I can um, have Bloodseeker rupture them for HP removal, which also goes through BKB. I have plenty of right clicks. Ursa, he can't slow them during BKB, but he sure as hell can right click them with Fury Swipes. Slardar can also amplify them, and they can be very vulnerable to right clicks, too. So I'm not really scared if they get BKBs, but I'm just really worried for my team because they're really ineffective without, and... Um, FNC gets caught out again. Not exactly sure what he's doing there. No bashes on him, unfortunately. And the snipe comes out late. Um, looks like Cat is probably going to go down here too. He was just trying to help out our teammates, but I think FNC gets caught out a little bit too much. They trade another two for zero, and I they, they want to get this T1 tower immediately after. So I'm in position to defend, just waiting for them to push. And they're still in between our towers right now poor yanks right now i actually thought that he was going to move towards us the sniper so i tried to force him there but he was going to die there anyways that went with a low probability with better communication and teamwork we would have been able to um save him right there at least save him for a little bit longer uh have a sentry see if we can go on yanks he silences him silence is actually not that useful i guess he can't cast smoke cloud but um, I try to force him up, force him out. So I've been able to potentially save two teammates already. So four staff already coming useful. FNC he TP's in to five heroes. I'm just like FNC bro. Like you gotta you gotta be a little bit more careful about where you go. Um, I don't have Ravage up. I just use my four staff. I, I just, my Ravage just came up. Um, I just used my four staff. Bloodseeker's low. Um, we had Sniper who was dead too. So like it would have been like three on five at best without Ravage, that's not a situation you want to take in. With that, I'm just like, well, we're probably going to lose this tower. Um, but I'm still like in position to defend. I finally have Ravage, and uh, I actually look for a force on him. I should have forced him right now, but I didn't want to risk him turning around and then being able to screw it over. And they steal Ravage. Um, I get last worded, and he steals Ravage, which is not good at all. Uh, so... This guy actually gets a kill on me. He steals Ravage. It's actually not that bad, though. It could have been a lot worse. Cat is getting some kills, and Pants is actually getting some kills, too. So, FNC misses the stun, unfortunately. But um, this Zeus constantly lives, too. Zeus is, like, really big XP for us to level 12. And get another kill, too. Silence is a Windrunner. So, even though they stole Ravage, um, we actually managed to come on top there. So, I was actually very surprised at this fight. Um, I think a lot of it had to do with Riki being out of position. He was like a little bit too close to the tower at a little bit too low HP. He was at like, I think two thirds HP. And they want to get the tower because no glyph, so I can understand where he's coming from. But he put his team in a really bad spot because they had to use like two four steps on him so they don't have any defensive cooldowns. And um, he can't really do that much damage because he could just die to any random AoE. We can see him with Thirst, we can see him with Amp, we can get sniped, he can get caught in the Ravage, and there's just all these things that can be just really bad for him. I'm actually very surprised that he did get the last word on me right before. Um, every time I Ravage, I want to cast um, Gush or Anchor Smash. Usually Anchor Smash because you don't need a target and it's just easier to click. Um, and it's a shorter cooldown. Like, every time I cast Ravage, especially with a Rubik in the pool. So... Um, just have to watch that as a tight under. Don't want any 
TI2 repeats coming along, so... Yeah, uh, we lose... We're, like, very close to losing our mid-tower right now, though. We don't have Ravage, we don't have Glyph, and at this point, if they force the issue, we just have to give it up. And we tried our best, but there's no point in um, losing any more. You don't want to go into the sunken cost effect and just give up more than you have to. So we just let it, we just let it go. I think I tell my team not to defend there, but uh, Bloodseeker actually gets picked up on top. I believe Riki just is a little bit too far right now, and Bloodseeker is a little bit under farm. If he has more items, he can just TP away from uh, Riki, like I talked about doing before. But he doesn't have the HP to survive for three seconds. So still trying to farm up right now. Again, just going with really small items right now. Uh, small build up with like four staff, no blink rush. Magic wand urn, just small fighting items. Trinkle boost, I'm not completely happy with because I, do, I am kind of forced to go for a uh, four staff build, but um, just trying to waste our time right now. And there were two heroes mid, three heroes on bottom. So I tell my team, yo, if you guys can fight, then um, you guys should do it. And one guy actually cancels the TP, but still, three on two and mid is pretty good. And if my team. Uh, were more vigilant, they could have taken advantage of that if they saw that three heroes were trying to go bottom because if I team you back home, that's like a five on two on mid and that's the situations that you want to force and that's why split push is so effective. You can take advantage of uncoordinated teams. If they don't back off and TP at the same time, then usually you can pick off the guys who are like, oh crap, you guys are TPing out and like, you know, when you're caught up in the moment, when you're pushing a tower and you really want to get it, sometimes you don't notice that your teammates TP away, especially if you have don't have that much coordination so they were pretty good about that didn't actually lose that much uh we waste our time though which is really important and i believe we get the tower tonight uh yeah we got the tower tonight too so um i mean losing a tower for nothing is not that great but we're still trying to buy time I'm trying to buy time for our big is just so important right now looks like someone's fighting mid i'm not there so i'm just like whatever um again going with the um low low cost items right now i work on a vlad's because we have four melee on our team man we just need more items like a little bit of lifesteal will help armor will help um and if we ever want to do roshan then we can do that and it also takes the burden off of ursa ursa can go for other items instead of uh Vlad's and he he needs more items. He needs BKB in particular. So um, I'm just trying to waste their time again. Just trying to delay the game as much as I can until my teammates can farm up. And I just want to drag them around the map, forge them top, force them bottom, force them away from middle lane because that's where most of the pressure's been. So um, I actually want to smoke up once these two heroes revive. I'm waiting for them. We can do Roshan if they back off. If they all TP top, maybe we can gank them at Roshan since it looks like they're in position to do so. And I really want to get a lead and a, a Roshan with the Aegis be a perfect way to do that. The nice to the Riki the Ages, so 24-15 lead definitely not in our favor right now. Uh, we haven't even taken out their bottom T1 yet. They've taken out three of our towers. They're like winning most of the team fights. They're ganking more effectively. Silencer has a lot of ints. Riki has more farm than our carries. We don't have BKBs, so all of these factors combined. So looks like we're huddled around Roshan right now. We have good ward set up now, but I believe they take out our ward on Roche. Uh, very very quickly and we don't really have good initiate right now um, FNC still working on BKB 1000 away this guy I got a four staff instead Ursa got a four staff instead um, but the four staff on uh, Slaughter I don't think it's that bad of a choice because he does need to be able to push himself out of a cloud if he gets defusled um, he's usually just gonna die and he doesn't feel like he can save up for BKB either so um, it's not that bad. It's also really good to catch up to heroes that can blink strike away, or if you get telekinesis or something. Um, it's a good investment, and you can help your teammates out. Sniper dies again. Not that big of a deal, though. He actually gets drum up on our team. I would have preferred if he had gotten Vlad's, but unfortunately, he's pretty underfarmed because he is in that support role. So they take out our wards. I know they're doing a Roshan right now, but nothing we can do to stop it right now. We don't have any towers to go there. So notice, like, very shortly after they take out our T1, um, and put a lot of pressure on mid, they can take Roshan. So you really want to defend these towers as much as possible. And they're smart in not taking out the T1 because if they have the T1 here instead of here, then we can pressure Roshan a lot. Shrapnel all across from the cliff. Um, we have uh, Bloodseeker for Bloodthirst and we can react faster if we have that tower up. So they take that Roshan, totally expected there. Uh, try and take down the timer. I don't actually remember if I take down the timer. Somebody has to take it down though. I don't actually know if you can see Ally Chat in this. I guess not. 
you can only see all chat. Well, I'm pretty sure I take down the timer. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you can pull it down in options, have a option for chat wheel for current time, and that's particularly useful for Roshan. So we have wards on bottom. I know they're all pressuring bottom right now, so trying to pressure top. Again, still the same thing. Trying to delay, trying to get them to TP top so we can farm our BKBs. And it's really important to draw the pressure off your teammates, and the best way to do that if you can't win team fights is just split pushing or ganking, but they're S5, so you can't really gank them when they're S5. So the die they're S5 right now, plus Seeker dies again because uh, he's out too far and Urs and uh, Riki has a defusal. So now we can't defend the tower. It's 5v4 um, It's five e four at best. Oh, and they all TP. I'm like, oh crap, I don't have a TP scroll. I actually bought Century Wars instead. So that was a little bit of a blunder on my part, but um, I forced a lot of TP. So two deaths to buy time is not the best trade, but I'm trying to make something out of nothing. And... Uh, I do waste a lot of time though. They're like all of them are coming to me. I'm trying to, uh, I'm actually trying to TP out, um, and try pop my magic stick, sell my century wards, TP. Can I make it? Uh, uh, oh. And they do so for me. And, but I mean, look at their position right now. Like five of them are on like their side of the map, just buying time for our teammates. Looks like Sardar has his BKB now. So mission success, right? I mean, it, it's, that was not a smart death. Ideally, I would have been able to TP out and force seven into the trees, but it doesn't always happen. I, I bought a lot of time uh, for us on like bottom um, before and on top before, so like one out of three times dying, it's not bad. I like those odds, pretty good. Um, and it's not like we didn't get anything out of it, so trying to make the most out of a bad situation. And there is such a thing as tactical dying um, in creating space. Cat still trying to work on his farm. He has a dust now, but dust on Riki, he can just defuse it off. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you can dispel the dust off yourself through Manta, through dust, through uh, mirror image on um, Nog, Siren, whatever. You can, you can, uh, whatever dispel mechanic you want, you can use that. I guess you can do it with Bloodseeker too, so, um, yep. They're pushing bottom right now. Don't really want to take a fight right now, uh, unless um, I have to. But notice I'm walking top right now. I want to do the same thing, just apply pressure, but... Um, I don't want to do that at the cost of us, um, I don't want to do that at the cost of me not having a TP. So if I TP top, I can't TP to bottom. So I just walk there. Um, I actually tell my team, look, do not defend this tower at all. The positioning is really bad. They have the Aegis right now. It's just a really bad fight to take. And I know that if we take the fight, we'll probably, if we lose a fight, we lose the racks right there. As opposed to, hey, why not just wait at the T3 and then if they want to fight us there, um, it's the same outcome, right? If we lose a fight there, we lose the racks, but we have the uphill advantage. Um, we have just the uphill advantage is like, do not underestimate that at all. It's much better positioning too, because if you actually look at the T2 on bottom, you kind of like have to push up a hill to, to defend it, which is really odd as a defending team. I don't like that positioning at all. So that's one of the towers I just usually just let fall. That's like the worst tower to defend on Radiant side, I believe. Uh, second worst is that one that I just clicked on, the T2 on the uh, left side of the map. So those two towers are just like notoriously difficult to defend and oftentimes I just give it up because I'm just like, whatever, I don't want to die there. And I don't want to pick a fight there and um, and lose a Rex because I, I fought on a T2 instead of a T3. So now they're just swinging by all our towers, trying to accrue that gold, trying to starve Radiant's us out right now. But right. the problem is they're moving S5 really clunkily right now. And they're getting towers out of it, but they're taking out like a little bit slowly right now. 30 minutes taking out the top T1 when you have a 12 kill advantage. That's not the best. So they're not splitting up very well. And then I see Riki on bottom. I'm like, oh crap, let's take a fight on top. Riki is not there. This is the best time to fight. So immediately when I see that, I tell my team, hey, let's fight there. Let's go. Go initiate. Go, 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 go. And I'm like, tell my team, go, 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 go. FNC, I don't know why he doesn't sprint in and go, but he should definitely do so right now. Um, and we actually managed to pick off someone or to find someone. I'm like, go, 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 cat, go, go, go. And I tell them to Earth Shock because this is the best opportunity they've been given us. Like, finally, after like 15 minutes, they've given us the opportunity five on four without the Aegis Bear. This is the time. We snipe, cat is there, my whole team's there. Uh, things are going well, except he is still sitting there and looks like um, we pick off Rubik immediately. They use Global and we take off two people immediately. Um, Yanks, though, has the... He four steps away from the Ravage. I still get two, though. Not that big of a deal. Because I only think there's three people left. So it looked like I was about to get all three. I thought that was a good Ravage. Uh, we get the Silencer, too. And at this point, we have... We trade a, what, four for three, I believe? And I'm like, back, guys. Got back, back. And they choose to reinitiate. I'm like, no! 
And of course we get wrecked because they mass bought back. So we could have left right then when I was like about to walk up that hill and we would have won the fight from there. But instead we give two more deaths and I'm just like, oh man, we're um, that's just not good at all. But we we forced so much out of that fight right there. So I think that was a really good fight for us. It would have been much better if we just exited right then, but still not a bad fight. Forced a couple of buybacks, got rid of the ages. Um, and I thought it was a good opportunity. If we had initiated like anywhere over here, Riki wouldn't have been able to get there in time. But when we're like all up in the opponent's jungle, um, he can just TP there really fast. So it wasn't ideal, but we... Uh, you can kind of get the idea of what I'm going for, right? Just split push, wait for them to mess up. If they TP back um, without the whole team and the other team just like sticks there, you pick them off. If they're as like four and one, you initiate on the four when the one can't get there. And you always want to react to how the opponent plays because they're in control of the game right now. It's it's on them to mess up their lead. They're 14 kills up right now and they're pushing the T3. I'm like, crap. And looks like Yanks is about to die though too, which is... Really good. He tries to BKB, but it doesn't matter. He just gets amplified. And uh, we get a buyback by Riki. So that push, that defend was really good for us. And they a little bit overextended over there. Riki, again, putting them in a bad position, getting ruptured at the tower um, without Aegis. And um, yeah, Yang spies back. And we are in a world of pain right now. Um, so. Riki gets a kill on Ursa. I don't actually know why we chase him out there. Again, we have a, like a good position. We force the buyback on Riki. We killed him. We staved off the push, and then we just overextend. So don't get overzealous when uh, you're given a small bone. And now we're in very, very close to losing our tower right now. I dropped this Sentry Warrior right here because I expect our T3 to die. And once that T3 dies, I'm not going to be able to to uh, get a good position for this ward. So I know I need to place it now. Um, and I actually didn't have enough slots for it, so I switched it out for a TP scroll, and um, that's just in case the T3 falls later. Uh, and it, it does fall. And he gets ruptured, forced, and trying to kill him, he gets sniped. He's so close to dying right now, and we managed to pick him off again. I get a blink dagger, and Slardar buys back, and we hold our rags. Very important hole for us. I actually get a blink because I need a blink. I can't just walk up and expect to be able to rupture it against good players. I'll get telekinesis, I'll get shackled, I'll get globe hold. I'll get smoked, I'll get defusal, I'll get bursted down. There's just like so many things that can happen to me. Um, and force is just a little bit too short of positioning. I need a blink dagger too, and force have to help my teammates or force that for additional bursts or to escape after I ravage. So uh, force blink, some people think it's overkill, but I highly value utility. So again, still going for small items. I'm not going for something big like a refresher. I don't have the mana pulse to sustain it right now. I can't build it up because I don't have enough gold. And we don't have a very good lead on the game right now. So I need every item I can get to get back in this game. So uh, I think Roshan is still down. I'm looking at it right now. It looks like it's about to be up. I tell them to check right now. And unfortunately for us, it's not up. It's the full three minutes. And looks like they are going to just... And we're, I, I would definitely love to take a fight right now. Five on four without Riki, without um, their ultimate suit is a really good fight. So I tell them to fight right now. And I don't know why they fought without Riki. It's just really stupid on their part. And because of that, we should be able to win the fight. Looks like he dodges stun FNC. He's not doing a very good job of landing his stuns. But regardless, uh, Loki looks like he's about to get focused down. Shackle goes out on FNC and pick him off. So again, you want to capitalize on any any mistakes opponents give you. When Riki dies without buyback and they're like out way far from their T2, you pick a fight. Regardless of whether or not you have your ultimate sub, you just try and fight and your BKBs and teamwork should do their trick. So now uh, we we still made something out of a bad situation. They have two heroes down now. Riki has respawned and Roshan's still not respawned. I'm just like, man, when's Roshan going to respawn? We got really unlucky with that because right now we can force a four on four and we're trading their, our support sniper for their Zeus. So that's, again, another fight that we should win. And you always want to think about these trade-offs before you take a fight, not like after the fight's happened. It's like, oh, we should have fought without Riki there. Like You don't want to be caught in this situation. You want to think about it beforehand uh, so you don't get caught in bad positions. Right now, 1,400 gold, just still saving for buyback just in case I get caught out. Um, even with the buyback nerf, it is still pretty important to have it sometimes, especially if you have a big ultimate changer like Ravage. So we clawed our way back uh, after they pushed a T3. A little bit of overextension by them um, and uh, a couple of good plays by us are putting us pretty close to getting back the game. But 
they have control of the map right now. Like most of the times when we uh, pick a fight, it's because they overextend or they're just out of position right now. So I still know that it's really difficult to take a straight up five on five unless they push up to T3. If they push up to T3, then I know it's a good place to fight because they're forced to like clump up the choke and then I can ravage them and then they'll get destroyed by BKBs. But outside of the fight, like someone can get picked off really fast with telekinesis before they BKB. So it's not ideal. I know they have Roshan control right now though. Um, so. It's like, it's, it's not ideal for us, but I want to take out, I, I think that they're taking out Roshan right now because I knew he hadn't respawned and it was very, very close. So I want to, um, I want to take a fight there. They have so many wars. I didn't actually know this. I have a gem right now because I definitely feel like I need it. And I walk up and they try and go on me. I get shackled in Telkanese, but the Kraken shell goes off. And, um, if I didn't get that Ravage off, we would have lost the fight there. And that was just so important that, um, that they didn't actually silence me. If they had smoke cloud on me, I would have just forced that out, but they weren't able to burst me down in time. They don't they have like a lot of burst, but not that much burst. And I'm just spamming my ravage button when I get telekinesis and shackle, and it takes like really, really good coordination to um, not be able to get ravage. And Silencer didn't actually use his global silence if he like timed it perfectly, maybe they could have gotten it off. Um, he sh definitely should have used it there, and I don't exactly know why he was in the Roshan pit and why he forced up himself down there, um, but yeah, that was really costly for them. Um, and un unfortunately, wait, did we not do Roshan because of that? Oh, I, I, oh yeah, we did do Roshan. Never mind, just getting one of my one of my honor. So Ursa picks up the Roshan. Now I think that we can actually win this game. I'm like, oh well, they just gave us a free one right there. And it's not only important giving yourself an Aegis; it's just really important denying the enemy an Aegis because what if they have the Aegis on Riki, they can just force the issue out of Rex, right? It's pretty much six on five. They have buybacks too, so it's just like really bad. But now, like if they buy back, they have to, it takes them so long to get here, and we can just like focus everything that we have on our damage dealers as long as we can survive the initial burst with the Riki BKB, Riki BKB, and the Zeus ultimate. And and the global silence then we should be able to win the fight so i'm like fairly comfortable right now um i pick up bot's uh so i can split push the lanes so that in case they do decide um to take a fight then i'll be able to maybe pressure like the t2s and eventually we'll be able to get a t3s once we win a fight and I want, I need to lay wards as soon as possible. We just want a big fight. They're most likely not going to be playing aggressive. They'll be like regrouping, trying to find what to do. They also don't want to take a fight because we have the ages. So I'm just uh, trying to get map control right now. Uh, I have the gem. I'm also looking for their wards too. If they don't know where we are, they're not going to take a fight. Notice like most of the times when they fight, they've been together as fight. They've been pushing towers. Like Riki will pick people off like now and then. But if he knows I have a gem, he won't be doing that. And they don't really like play too aggressively without war so if i can shut down their vision i can keep them as five i can keep them under farmed and we should be able to uh win the game through a lot of farm mass bkbs and whatnot so i'm trying to get uh go top to pick him off since i see that he's alone but fortunately i don't get there in time and neither i nor ursa nor bloodseeker have any stuns for him actually does he have basher no he doesn't have basher so we don't have any stuns. my rabbit just comes up and uh, i'm just sitting behind him just in case they bait around but I see a couple heroes pushing bottom, so I don't think that anything's around. But in case someone's farming up here, I'm trying to look for them. And looks like no easy pick off there. Just trying to create our opportunity. I know Riki TP'd away, so if their whole team's magically here, we take a 5-4 and four fight without Riki. And I have a gem, and we have Aegis. Just by some miraculous appearance that he is here. So, Riki's farming mid. Still don't want to show myself, though. I don't ever want them to know where I am. I'm still trying to look for an easy pick off. Maybe someone's overextending a little bit. Um, Riki is in middle. I want to get him right now. Looking at their team right now, they're all on bottom. So I think that we can pick him up. I should probably wait a little bit for my team, but the creep wave is about to die. I want to go on him right now. I force to have Gush, and then when he runs away and no one's there to follow, I just tell my team back, 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 because all of them are coming from bottom. Notice no one's pushing this creep wave, so I know they're all going to um, take him right there. And I don't really want to fight in an even situation when I can probably pick a better fight. So no harm, no foul. They know I have a gem right now. We killed the observer reward, so they're still wasting their time a lot. And now they want to they want to take us over here and they're like clumped over here whereas we can take a uh, position like in the hill up the cliff and through over here too they try and use silence right now and uh, I get I get global and I get last worded and 
I get shackled to, it's like all this crap on me, I'm about to die with a gem, this is bad, but there are so many heroes on me and they use so many cooldowns on me that I'm perfectly okay with that. I look at everyone's positioning around the map, I don't want to die to um, the Rubik too, so I look on Rubik on the mini-map because there's creeps falling, I'm going to try and follow these two. If I can get a Ravage on like two or three people, then that'd be uh, still pretty big for us. He tries to burst us down, but um, I have a little bit too much HP, um, Gushing them, Kraken Shield. Working wonders, Zeus trying to kill me, but I have a gem, so I know they don't have wards uphill. Um, I try to blink and gush from from uphill. Again, I'm always trying to be uphill so that they can't. He can't just kill me. He could bolt me. One bolt would kill me. But I know my position well enough so that I won't get picked off, and I don't want to lose a gem. I mean, even if I die, we can still recover the gem. But I'm always trying to cast from uphill. Notice, like when he's down by that ward spot, I'm like up the hill. When he goes down the river, I'm up the hill still. So like, and even like before the fight too, like. Uh, when I was like really low HP, I'm up this hill. So like constantly, I'm always trying to be uphill so they don't know where I'm from. If a Blink Tidehunter ravages you and you don't expect it, you're most likely going to lose the fight. I didn't have to use Ravage that fight and we actually ended up winning it. Ursa didn't use the BKB either. So now I'm like, hey, wow, we can win a fight without Ravage. We're in a really good position now. So now I'm trying to force more issues, force more towers, and you can see how like the... Uh, your play changes as you get more and more advantage. You can start doing more aggressive things. You can take fights outside of your base instead. So um, I take way too long to play this ward, and it's during daytime. I know that they're going to remove the ward, though. So I'm just like, okay, whatever. They're going to remove the ward. They're going to buy sentries. They're pretty good about that, and um, they're smart players. And if they see me dropping observer ward in their base, they're just going to deward it. So I lay a second observer ward in mid, and that one they didn't see because I placed it from behind the tree, and they were all up there. So I still have one vision. Not a total complete waste of 150 gold. I'm still, I'm right now. I'm trying to look for the rewards right now, as well as check runes. I'm trying to work on my refresher too. I get an invis I'm like, hey, check this out. And uh, a gem is not really useful for them too. I mean, it's kind of useful for taking out wards, but if they suspect I have a ward, they can just get a sentry, and they don't want to feed us a gem, and we don't have any shadow blade heroes. So I very, very, I'm, I'm pretty confident that I'm not going to die uh, with this invis rune. I could like ward up and check out, but. It's, it's, it's not really necessary. My t our whole team isn't here yet. Starter, we need him. And I want... Uh, someone calls for a smoke right now. I believe it's Sniper. So we all gather up for a smoke, waiting for uh, Slaughter as well as the Chicken. And right now, we want a Force Rice right now. I believe we still have the Aegis, although it's not for that much longer. And... Oh, wow. The smoke actually only hit three of us i didn't even realize it i'm like oh let's go let's go 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 but they don't have wards so it's not that big a deal i de-warded the mid on the ward on mid earlier um when um we went for the reiki I'm trying to look for kills right now as much as possible um i usually try and draw draw on the map too or tell my team where we go as smoke because i i want to be the one um in front trying to find kills he finds this guy and I see the Zeus, and I, as well as the Rubik, and I immediately try and ravage the Rubik. If I ravage Rubik, there's no way he's going to be able to steal it, and we take a good fight right here. Looks like Zeus um, tries to stay alive with Ghost Scepter and Yules, but it's not enough. We got enough deeps for him, and uh, trying to force the issue right now. I believe we still have the Aegis. Zeus is down. We don't have Ravage, but it's still a pretty good fight for us, and it was really important for him to, uh, for FNC to find that kill right there. And it was all happened because of this war right there. If I didn't find this war, we wouldn't have fought Silencer. They wouldn't have been forced to buy back, so having Vision late game is just so important. Now they use Global. I don't have shit right now, so I tell my team I'm back. I don't want to lose a gem. I don't want to overextend, so I'm just like, we're just turning tail right now. Trying to save Cat right now. Um, I, tr I want to. I try to force him right there actually, but uh, he got yields before I could force. And now all my team would just get GTFO. I'm like back, back GTFO. If if they're not on the same page as you, make them and be very communicative. And I'm rewarded for my communication with a regeneration. And we get out with just one loss. Not so bad. We killed three of them. Two of them bought back. Actually, the Zeus buy back too. Yeah, Zeus bought back too. So we killed three of them, three of them bought back, all for an Aegis and an Ursa death. That's pretty good for us. Uh, now they're trying to force the issue with Ursa um, down and with Ravage down. That's the big thing. And they're like really desperate right now. If you can tell, like, they're like, well, shit, we've been losing all our fights right now. The kill score's even, but they can feel the pressure on them right now. With our BKBs, they can't really do that much, and they're looking for a small window of opportunity. They think this is the right opportunity for them right now. Ursa down, no Ravage. They're like going to push. I don't know what in the world Riki is doing right now there though and i'm pretty confident that we can want, win the fight if they want to push without riki be my guess i don't have ravage and they have um their stuff up right now but they're pushing right now without riki that's just so stupid and they're gonna lose this fight and i was 
pretty sure they were going to. I wasn't even sure that they were going to initiate, or else I would have TP'd on the Rags. Um, but one runner dies first. Looks like he's about to die second. Gets ghosted, but doesn't matter. We have Snipe with the Sport Sniper, and now the game's like pretty much in the books. But like, um, if it's not if if Ricky were there, it would have been a lot different. Looking at Ursa's gold, he oh, did he buy back? I don't actually know. Um, but if, if they had done that, then I would have been much more precarious about when I TP'd, where I TP'd, and much more worried about that fight. But if they're going to push farm for until our BKBs with no anti BKB of their own, then I don't, I don't really care. Now I'm working on my refresher. We see a Halberd coming up on Sniper. Let's check his BKB. It's down to six seconds right now. He has a Ghost too, but if you have to go Ghost after on your carry, that's almost all physical damage. Then you know you're in you're in trouble, and I just have way too much physical damage on my team, though. And yeah, it does get countered by Ghost Scepters, but notice we can still kill people. We can just snipe them, I can gush them, um, I have Earth Stomp, that's not really that great for it, but it's good enough, apparently. We could get a Diffusal 2 of our own, but then you just switch targets, not a big deal. They're they're not really good at, like, sustained fights, they're good at, like, bursting people down, maybe with, like, a Blink Rubik Initiate, with, like, a uh, Purge Smoke Cloud, uh, with Zeus Ultimate and Global, but outside of Global and um, Wrath of God, um, Thunder God's Wrath, I couldn't think of the name of the spell, without Thunder God's Wrath, then they can't really win team fights, so... Uh, yeah, Ghost Scepter, slight concern, but it's not it's not my concern. I'm I'm just a measly tight hunter. Uh just working on my refresher right now. Fairly close to it, but I still wanna always stay up for a buyback. I you almost always use my unreliable gold to uh buy my um items. I'll wait for like if I have two thousand reliable gold, I'll wait for like uh thirty seven hundred until I can buy my oblivion staff and then I'll still have 2,000 gold, but it's all reliable. So if I die, I'm still just as close to my refresher. And gold management is a pretty important part of the game. I see a lot of people asking, oh, why do you have so much gold? But that's why. I just want to spend my unreliable gold, not my reliable gold when I can um, when I can avoid it. So uh, I can also buy my refresher recipe instead of that. But I actually want the Oblivion Staff. I need a little bit more mana. Sometimes I uh, just like constantly spam me out Oblivion Staff, and I have enough mana for all my spells right now. 75% mana reach, that may not seem like that much with 6 intelligence, but it's a little bit that adds up much better than a recipe sitting in my stash. And I don't really need the item slots because I have BOTs. So they go right now. Um, Great Silence just comes up a little bit too late. Trying to kill the Rubik. Um, he's already dead, so we should win this fight pretty easily. He BKBs, but he gets uh, ruptured, and he's forced to stand still, and... Now it's just a matter of just pushing an ending right now. So, um, this game was really important in showcasing what to do when you're behind, how to pick smart fights. Like, fighting smartly is like one of the most important things in the game, and it's often overlooked by um, players. And you have to think about, like, why do you take that engagement? Should you be taking this engagement at night? Can we pick a better time to fight? And what can we do to prevent them from taking good fights with them? And um, you always have to be aware that you always have to be aware about like how you can pick better fights and whether that's split pushing, whether it's just farming so you can get BKB so you, you can overcome the positional and item disadvantage, um, whether it's just um, taking out Aegis, whether it's just like smoking around so you can catch them unaware so positioning's not that big of a deal. Uh, whatever it is, you always want to be um, aware of where and how you take fights and I think this one game was a pretty good showcase of that and Rarely did I get caught out of caught out of position without ravage uh, Rarely did I get caught out like before a big team fight too I didn't have to buy it back even though I was ready for it So I'm trying to play smart. I didn't lose my gem either which is actually very rare for me I typically lose gem within like two minutes of when I buy it, which is a really bad habit of mine um, I was split push effectively. I only died that one time on top um, with all my split push this game um, I didn't go for greedy items, I managed my gold well, and at the end I have a refresher at the end of the game, so, uh, yeah, it's, um, it's not the greatest lineup, but you can make it work if you have good play. I think people underestimate hero composition too, I think that good play can overcome poor hero picks. Um, I want to TP back and then use my refresher and BOT back with my Ravage, but... They don't allow that, unfortunately, and just closing the game out right now, so... Um, it's not like they win any bad item builds either. Like, they could mass BKBs too, but it's, it's like, not that big of a deal because 
like Zeus is almost always going to get his stuff off regardless. Like BKB helps get off what like another couple of bolts or something, and you can still get stun locked. So I don't think they went any bad item choices. I think that they should have split push a little bit more and controlled us with like maybe like uh, Riki plus uh, uh, Riki plus. Um, SA, I think both of those heroes combined can like burst down most heroes uh, to the point where if they just BKB and run away, Riki can still chase them down. Um, end of the game, they actually we actually got the kill advantage looking at gold per minute. My gold per minute is actually pretty high though as Tide Hunter actually beat out our Ursa. But that is the end of the game. I uh, hope you guys enjoy the replay. I don't play Tide Hunter that often, but he's a pretty important hero and um, like. It's not only like timing of your ravages and like placement of them. That's not the important part with Tidehunter. It's like where and when you take your fights, where and when you choose to ravage, not getting picked off before your team takes a fight. And these are just so important as an initiator. I think it's like it's obviously some part execution too. Um, the one at Roshan, I probably shouldn't have been in front, and I probably shouldn't have uh, risked myself dying without getting off ravaged, but. Aside from that, I thought my position was pretty good. So, hope you guys learned something. Again, this was Merlini with Merlini Plays Dota 2. If you like my material, you can subscribe to me at youtube.com slash Merlini Dota. Uh, I release a, at least a few videos a week. Mailbag every Tuesday. Mailbag at MerliniDota.com for questions regarding those. Thanks, guys, for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it.